In today's lecture, let's talk about something really interesting, the chemotherapy of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a chronic granulomatous disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now, although it commonly affects the lungs, it may also affect other body parts such as the CNS, liver, spleen, bones, genitourinary system, and it may be disseminated or miliary tuberculosis. It's most commonly acquired by inhaling infected droplets from the cough of an infected person and it's a global emergency causing almost 5,000 deaths a year and two, sorry, 5,000 deaths a day and 2.3 million each year. What makes it highly resistant is one, it's a slow growing bacteria, so there's a possibility of persisters and dormants. It has an ability to survive intracellularly, so it resides inside the macrophages. Moreover, the gaseous material around them makes it difficult for the drugs to penetrate. All in all, single drug treatment of mycobacterial infections readily promotes the development of resistance whereby we need a combination therapy over a long period of time. The aim of the treatment is to kill the dividing bacilli, make the person sputum negative and also destroy the persisters in order to prevent the relapse and ensure complete cure. Coming to the first line of drugs which are used in preference, the rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and streptomycin, which can be remembered with the mnemonic RIPES. The second line drugs include fluoroquinolones, amicacine, cyclosporin, ethionamide, paraamino salicylic acid, and capriomycin. This can be remembered with the mnemonic PACE PAC. Face PAC. So you have first line of drug ripes and second line paste back. This is a summary of all the drugs that we will be studying. If you can recall the first line drugs, rifampicin ripe. Rifampicin inhibits RNA synthesis, R for RNA synthesis. It inhibits transcription. Then we have isoniazid, which inhibits mycolic acid synthesis. So it inhibits the cell wall synthesis. Then we have pyrazinamide. This inhibits fatty acid synthesis, so it damages the cell membrane. And then there's ethambutol, which also inhibits the cell wall. The last drug is streptomycin, which is an aminoglycoside, which is why it inhibits protein synthesis. Apart from that, the second line drugs were fluoroquinolones, which they inhibit DNA replication by binding to topoisomerase 2 and 4. There's lenozolid, which also inhibits protein synthesis. And there's ethionamide and cycloserin, which also inhibit cell wall synthesis. So this should be remembered throughout the lecture while we're studying individual drugs. Let's start with isoniazid. Isoniazid is the most active, effective and cheapest drug which is used for the treatment of tuberculosis. It inhibits mycolic acid synthesis by penetrating into the cell and forming a metabolite which combines with an enzyme which is necessary for mycolic acid synthesis thereby inhibiting the synthesis of mycobacterial cell wall. It has the ability to penetrate inside the cell, which is why it can kill intracellular bacilli and also the bacilli living in the walls of the cavities. It's completely absorbed orally, penetrates all tissues, tuberculous cavities, necrotic tissues, and CSF. It's metabolized by acetylation. So a person may be a slow or a fast acetylator, 
due to genetic predisposition so the t half life of the drug may be 1 hour or it may be 3 to 5 hours slow acetylators they respond to the drug better but they are more prone to peripheral neuropathy whereas fast acetylators are more common to hepatotoxicity its adverse effects include one peripheral neuropathy this is because isoniazid interferes with the utilization and the excretion of pyridoxin or p6 leading to peripheral neuropathy this can be reduced by pyridoxin supplementation apart from that fever skin rashes cns toxicity may develop in some patients it's also associated with hepatitis which is associated with loss of appetite nausea vomiting jaundice and upper right quadrant pain in patients with g6pt deficiency there may be hemolytic anemia due to increased reactive oxygen species this was all about isoniazid interfering with mycolic acid synthesis and metabolized by acetylation let's go to rifampicin now rifampicin is a semi synthetic derivative of rifamycin which inhibits rna synthesis r for rifampicin and r for rna synthesis in this diagram you can see it here RNA synthesis inhibits transcription. So rifampicin is active not only against tuberculosis but also gram positive and gram negative bacteria and also mycobacterium leprosis. So it's effective against staph, streptococcus, chlamydia, leiogenella and also mycobacterium even complex. So its mechanism of action is that it binds selectively to bacterial dependent DNA dependent RNA polymerase thus inhibiting RNA synthesis so it prevents the transcription of messenger RNA Rifampicin is the only drug that acts on persisters which is what makes it one of the most important drugs in the first line of drugs it acts both intra and extracellularly but when used alone resistance quickly develops it's the same is with isoniazid its pharmacokinetics are that it's well absorbed it has good tissue penetrability reaches caseous material cavities and csf also appears in saliva sweat and tears of the patient which leads to discoloration of body fluids it's a microsomal enzyme inducer this leads us to its adverse effects because it's a microsomal enzyme inducer it can increase the metabolism of many drugs so in patients who are suffering from say aids who are on antiretroviral therapy they are given rifabutin which is which has less microsomal enzyme inducing properties apart from that it's also hepatotoxic so it's contraindicated in patients with hepatic dysfunction in some patients it may cause gi disturbances such as nausea vomiting abdominal cramps may cause flu like syndromes with chills fever and headache and they also will be a harmless orange coloration to body fluids uh, such as in urine sweat tears and even the contact lens of the person so it's very important for them to be informed about such a side effect uh, it may also manifest cns symptoms confusion peripheral neuropathy dizziness drowsiness headache and also hypersensitivity reactions whereas there is fever skin rashes and urticaria so rifampicin is a drug that comes in with a lot of side effects however it's effective against a lot of bacteria as well not only tuberculosis it can also be uh, administered with dapsone in leprosy 
along with isoniazid in tuberculosis infections. It can be given along with vancomycin in uh, resistant staph infections, doxycycline in uh, brucellus, and also in uh, it can be combined with vancomycin of ceftrioxone in pneumococcal meningitis. So rifampicin is bactericidal R for RNA synthesis inhibition. Coming to our next drug which is pyrazinamide. Pyrazinamide. As you can see in this diagram, pyrazinamide inhibits fatty acid synthesis and damages the cell membrane. It's a pro-drug converted to pyrazinoic acid in the body, which is why it is more active in the acidic medium. It is well absorbed, achieves good concentration in the CSF, and it's also effective against intracellular bacteria because it is readily penetratable. Its adverse effects include hepatotoxicity, nausea, vomiting, arthralgia, and hyperuricemia hyperuricemia because it reduces the excretion of uric acid leading to hyperuricemia and gout arthritis. Coming to the last drug in the first line drugs we have streptomycin. Now streptomycin as you can recall is an aminoglycoside. So aminoglycosides act by binding to specific 30th subunit ribosomal proteins inhibiting the protein synthesis. Not only that, they induce misreading of the code on mRNA template resulting in abnormal protein synthesis. So they inhibit protein synthesis and also lead to abnormal protein synthesis. They also inhibit translocation. As you can see in this diagram, they bind to 30S ribosomal subunit and inhibit translation protein synthesis and D2 abnormal protein synthesis. Their side effects are ototoxicity, nephrotoxicity and skin reactions. They have a poor penetrating power which is why they are only applicable against extracellular bacteria. Sorry, we have one more drug which is ethambutol. Ethambutol as you can see in this diagram also inhibits mycolic acid synthesis. How it does so is by inhibiting arabinocyte transferases which are involved in mycobacterial cell wall synthesis thereby inhibiting the cell wall synthesis. It acts on fast multiplying bacteria in the cavities which is why it's tuberculostatic. It's the only first line drug which is tuberculostatic whereas the rest are tuberculocidal. It's also effective against atypical mycobacteria and its adverse effects are very interesting. It causes optic neuritis. Optic neuritis is basically red green color blindness. So the patient is unable to differentiate between red and green color. How you can remember this is ethambutol starts with E and optic neuritis occurs in the eye which again starts with E. So ethambutol E. It may also lead to hyperuricemia, skin rashes, joint pain, nausea, anorexia and headache. In If a person starts showing the symptoms of optic neuritis, the drug has to be immediately withdrawn and it is not administered in children because their ability to differentiate between red and green is not reliable. So these were all of the drugs that are used in the first line therapy. Isoniazid, ethambutol, pyrazinamide, rifampicin and streptomycin. The second line drugs may include lenozolid, fluoroquinolones, cyclosarin, and ethionamide which you know they, they can be dealt with in other chapters disease treatment regimens now the drugs in management of tuberculosis 
the regiment consists of two phases first is an initial intensive phase of 2 months followed by a continuation phase of 4 to 7 months in the initial phase we try to kill as many tubercle bacilli as possible making the patient's sputum negative for tuberculosis it includes four drugs multi drug therapy with isoniazid rifampicin pirazinamide and ethambutol to prevent the development of drug resistance the next phase is continuation phase where we aim at the persistence and the dormancy because it's a slow growing bacteria if the treatment is not continued long enough the surviving bacilli may cause tb disease in the patient in a later time when he is immunocompromised because of incorrect prescriptions or maybe poor quality drugs and most importantly patient non adherence several strains of tuberculosis have developed resistant to first line drugs such as isoniazid and rifampicin in such cases three first line drugs along with uh, extra drugs such as fluoroquinolones and amikacin are administered to the patient to treat tuberculosis and there's a program that is initiated which is called dots or direct observation treatment short course um where a trained healthcare worker or a designated person watches a patient swallow each dose of the antitubercle drug and document it so patient compliance is a very important part of tuberculosis infection and it's very important for everyone to be aware of the importance of the drugs that are used in tuberculosis and also be aware of the side effects of the drugs i hope this lecture was able to help you in some way and thank you so much for watching stay tuned for more